we want to be able to select a month and look up from this table the entire column. And there's one, two, three different built-in functions that can look up a column. We'll start with Choose Column. In the array, we're going to give it rows and columns. And then comma, column number. You can put multiple column numbers, and it will bring all of them together in a table. But we just want column number one, so I'm going to type a one. Now the problem with this, of course, well, it does deliver the column. It's not linked to this cell. So F2, rather than hard coding, we'll use the lookup function xmatch. xmatch looks up a particular item, comma, within a range, and it reports the position, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that will work. The default on xmatch is exact match. So that's it, close, close. And when I enter, change the input. Bam, there's February. Now we can use XLOOKUP, and probably this is the way to go, because I can look up February, comma, within this horizontal range, 1, 2, 3, or 4 position, comma. And in return array, if I delivered a single row, it would deliver a single answer. But because I'm giving XLOOKUP in return array multiple rows, it'll deliver all the rows for February. Close, Control Enter, we can change it, and it updates perfectly. The old school way, and XLOOKUP came out a few years ago. This one just came out. Both of these are in Microsoft 365. But Index, that's in every version. So Array, we give it the whole array, comma, and it wants to know how many rows. But remember, we need all the rows. So you either leave it blank, type a comma, or put a 0. That instructs index to get all the rows. And then in column number, we use match to give it the particular column number, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And that will work. Change the input, and bam, they're all working. Now choose columns delivers an array. XLOOKUP and index deliver a range. Now they look the same, but internally, if you try to use these functions in various other functions, there's some functions that can handle arrays and ranges. There's other functions that only can handle a range. So in that case, you wouldn't want to use choose columns. Now to get a total based on whatever we select in this cell, we can put any of these functions inside of sum. It doesn't care if it's an array or a range. So we can use choose columns. We can use XLOOKUP inside of SUM, and we can use INDEX in SUM. Now, next video, we'll see an example where we actually have to use a range, not an array. In that case, we wouldn't want to use Choose Columns. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.